Do you ever feel like you're not in the right spot on the longboard? Or you feel like you're not gliding and flowing as you should and your speed isn't being managed correctly? Well, today I'd love to help out with this and provide you guys with the best technique that I found after many years of coaching as well as surfing and competing myself for positioning correctly on the longboard. It is a really simple adjustment that can make the world of difference and I'd love it if with this video today you could watch this video and then actually go out and translate it into your next session because I've seen the massive impact it can have. So I have also just come off a semi-final finish at the latest WSL qualifying series event in Noosa. Something I'm pretty pleased with but obviously hoping I can have a stronger finish at the next contest in Manly. Um, but what I'm going to do today is actually use some of that footage as a basis to look at and analyse uh, to show you how integral this is to the fundamental principles of longboarding in terms of speed and flow. If you are new here, my name is Ben Considine and I'm here to help uh, educate as well as share my learnings and experiences with you all like this one today. Um, if you do find the video useful, then please feel free to subscribe as well as if you have anyone that you think might get something out of this as well, please feel free to share it with them. But well, let's get into it. So just before we get to the technique, I did want to first help to highlight exactly what this is going to address. So the key problems that we see with our surfers and the people that I coach so that hopefully you can identify this in your surfing and then we can try to fix this with the technique that we're about to implement. Now, the first most common thing that we often see is people sitting and staying on their tail for the entirety of the wave, unless of course they're moving towards the nose. Now, the reason that we might do this is because the tail is exactly where we want to be positioned if we're going to turn. And if we're sitting on the tail, then we're always ready to turn, which means that if we are going to nosedive, if we are coming up to a precarious position on the wave, and we've got the ability to utilize the pivot point over the tail to maneuver ourselves on that wave. The unfortunate thing about this though is that we are constantly and forever stalling and so we never actually allow that board to get into a trim point or to glide on the wave properly and so it's always stalling, always going pretty slowly and it means yeah we can't really get into the, the sweet spot in terms of our positioning on the board. We'll also notice with this technique that we'll get a big flapping of the board especially in bigger waves where we're sitting on the tail of the board and the nose of the board starts to go up and down because we aren't managing the board correctly, engaging the rail correctly, and the speed is just doing what it wants with the board. So what we're gonna do today is speak about how can we manage this a little bit better, and this is gonna help you serving a long way. The other thing that we might see is where people are sort of stuck in between the back and middle third. And so again, they're not all the way on the tail, so they might not notice so much of that flapping of the front of the board. Um, but then also not engaging the midpoint of the board, which is so crucial, and we'll speak about that in a second. This is really, really common when we see people transition from a shortboarding background through to a longboard, and this is because when we're a shortboarder, essentially all we need to do to transition weight from the pivot point or the tail through to uh, the part of the board where we're going to accelerate and gain our speed and balance, which is the middle, is lean forwards or lean backwards. With the longboard though, we've got minimum nine foot with us, and so just leaning forwards and backwards on one foot or another doesn't land us in the right positions, and we do need to know how to negotiate and navigate our way up and down the board to do this more effectively, ideally with cross-stepping. So let's get into the solution here, and I'm just gonna run this through how I would usually talk to someone that I'm coaching about it, so hopefully you guys can translate this really nicely into your practice. We'll also do some analysis of this in the contest that I just competed in as well. But essentially, if we're thinking about the board, I do like to break it down into its thirds. So we have the mid third and then the back third, which is the tail, and then the front third, which is the nose. I love to think about that middle third is our home base. So home base is where we try and gain all of our speed, and it's also where we gain all of our balance. This means that anytime we're trying to gain speed or be in the most balanced position, we need to be in this middle third. And I think if for a lot of us, if we're thinking about our surfing and whether we're actually coming into that middle third every time we need to do these things, there's a good percentage of the time that we might not be doing this. So this is something that's really, really good to have a think about and try and analyze in your surfing. What we do want to be doing is, of course, if we want to be over the pivot point, so the tail to turn, we've got to do that. And then, of course, if we want to head to the nose, we've got to be at that front third as well but we've got to be in the mid third to gain balance and gain speed. So what this might look like is just running you through a typical example of a wave is where we might pop up at the start and pop up at the tail to engage our rail to turn. We then might cross step to the middle to try and accelerate and this is our home base. 
from home base, we can consider our next options. We want to be in the midpoint because it offers us the shortest possible uh, pathway to either the nose or the tail. And it is also where we're going to harness all of our speed and balance. So that's where we want to come to. So we've come to the middle. If the nose ride section is there, sure, we head to the nose and do a nice hang turn, hopefully. Um, and then we can come back to our home base after the nose ride is complete. If, on the other hand, it's not the right section for a nose ride and we've got to hook ourselves back into the pocket, then we want to use the back third, so the tail, to make that turn happen. And then we've got to come back into the middle third from the tail so that we can accelerate out of the turn. And this is something that I often see not happening as well, where people are often more confident coming to the middle of the board and they go, yep, understand that we need to be in the sweet spot, we need to be in the middle point of the board to trim properly and allow our board to glide. So they get that. But when they're completing their turns, they turn and coming out of their turn, they stay on the tail rather than cross-stepping forwards, which is something that we'll look at in a second. But accelerating out of your turn by coming into the middle of the board is one of those differentiating factors that take us from our beginner to intermediate longboarding through to our more experienced levels, because this is where we're really utilizing those advanced techniques of uh, making sure we're on the right part of the board for the right part of the wave in the right maneuver. Now, this concept of coming into the middle of the board does apply to any sort of wave that we might be on. Uh, whether it's a small wave or a big wave, which we'll go into a few different examples of, through the contest that I just competed at as well. But it's always going to be best to gain our speed on a longboard, especially a log or a traditional longboard, which is more what I'm speaking about, in the midpoint of the board. Okay, so now it's time to break down some of the waves that I got in the contest. I will be starting with a couple of waves from a bigger day of the contest. So this is one of the first days I was surfing, um, but I really wanted to hone in and spend a bit more time on some of the ladder videos because it does show a pretty tricky day um, over at the beach in Noosa where the waves were really flat and pretty gutless, didn't have a lot to them, which is where uh, being able to make sure we are maintaining our position in the middle of the board to maintain our speed and our balance is really, really important. So let's get into that now. We first step into the, the first wave here. It's on a bigger day. You can tell from the, the start of the wave, I'm starting on the tail so that I can position my board where I want to. A little bit of a cut back there. And then as I'm coming through here, I do the bottom turn and I cross step to the middle of the board there. Now, the reason I really like this example is because this is the middle of the board here is shown as a really good place to just reconsider our position on the wave, what we want to do. It's not necessarily that we have to hit the nose, but it is a great way to set ourselves up on the board in the right position to either go forwards uh, to the nose or backwards to the tail. In this instance, I've been able to get myself onto the right part of the board. I come back to the tail and then I readjust correct and then I'm stepping through to the nose here as well. After that cross step backwards, I come back to the tail and then you can see here, I think it's really interesting. I think I make a little mistake here. I do a bit of a no-no where we, I shuffle into the middle of the board uh, mistakenly, um, probably because I was a bit rushed and wanting to get to the nose and it was the first uh, heat that I'd done in this contest. Uh, but hit the nose here. And then you can tell coming back here, I actually stay on the tail because I've got this section eyeing off in front of me that I want to be sitting. And so I get to this end point there where I do a little bit of a rebound off the top thing. But I think that was a really nice first example at least of the use of the midpoint of the board. So we're using it to accelerate, to gain our speed and to use as our home base if we're not turning and we're not heading to the nose. But let's head to the next wave here. Now, this is a little bit of a different example on my backhand, but you can see from the very start of the wave, positioning on the tail to do the drop knee uh, bottom turn and then coming straight through to the middle. What I would like to highlight here is as I'm trying to gain my balance, I'm grabbing rail and I'm trying to push myself through this white water, but I've got a parallel stance in the midpoint of the board, which I, is, I think, a good thing to consider. And then here is a good example where we definitely want to be on the tail. If I wasn't on the tail here, I'd definitely notice died. This wave kind of just bottomed down from underneath me. So good thing to make sure I'm considering there that I don't always want to be in the midpoint of the board. There's definitely use of the tail. Just stall, avoid nose dives like this, and also to tan. You can even see being on the tail so much, if we're on the tail all the time, that flapping that you just saw occur after I landed from the uh, kind of the drop there. And um, that's what can happen a lot of the time if we are maintaining our position on the tail so that's why we've got to make sure we're using the middle of the board when we need to as well this next day very small waves out of the beachy at noosa i think what i'd like to highlight on this wave here nice transitions between uh the tail to the nose there but then accelerating out of my turns particularly on this day so important to make sure i was coming to the middle of the board and then as these waves die out you can see trying my hardest to keep on with the wave by 
maintaining my glide in the midpoint of the board, not on the tail because that's never going to work. All right, next wave here. Midpoint of the board, just to check up what I'm doing. Good, coming back from the nose and accelerating out of that cutback with like two cross steps forwards, accelerating out of that turn with the two cross steps forwards as well. So good things to make sure we're considering there. Good, you can see I'm maintaining my trim and holding that position, trying to get as fast as I can down the line on the fat wave by having my position in the middle of the board there as well. So another good example of that here. So on a different board here now, something is a little bit flatter, a little bit faster, a little hang 10. And then you can see again, as I come out of this turn, I actually want to go straight into a bottom turn. So I don't utilize that midpoint of the board in this instance, because I do want to head straight onto the tail to make sure I bottom turn quickly and head down the line. But after that, I come straight through with that cross step out of the bottom turn into the midpoint of the board so that again, we can gain as much flow, as much glide as possible and then heading to the nose. And then we just see the typical transitions here to and from the nose. And then that one dies out. All right, and here you can also see again that parallel stance through the white water and put myself in the most balanced position on the board as possible so using that midpoint so i can traverse across that wave as quickly as possible whilst the wave isn't giving me very much for the very last wave here this one was a lot of effort coming back again coming into the middle of the board from the tail to accelerate from that little cutback bottom turn start for the wave and then coming out of that turn straight into the cross steps forwards little touch to the nose Cutting back, again, using that nice one-step cross-step, which is a nice way to make sure we're placing our weight a bit further forwards to get some level of acceleration uh, out of a turn when we're not necessarily going to have the time to commit two full cross-steps forwards and backwards before our next turn is put in place. And then finishing up there. So again, these waves are really, really tricky. In the heats for this day in particular, it was a lot about whether you were getting the right waves, whether you were waiting for the set. So a lot of heat strategy coming into that. Um, but that was, it's all part of competition. It was a lot of fun to focus on. The best surfers being on the best waves, and that's what it's all about. So, again, really happy with the semi final finish. But in terms of bringing it back to uh, the strategy and technique that we're using today, it is so important to make sure that we're integrating this into your surfing. In terms of the fundamentals that we do need to be on top of, we need to be really understanding of our position on the wave and also uh, the maneuvers that we want to be completing, depending on our position on the wave. If you're just trying to gain speed and maintain balance, you've got to be in the middle of the board but then if we want to turn then we've got to be confident with our ability to cross step forwards and backwards as well this is going to be a really really good thing just to have in the front of your mind for your next session for your coming sessions because it does help link the wave so much better and it helps with your flow on the wave which is as we spoke about a really integral part a principal element of longboarding as well as the criteria for a contest if that's something that you're interested in as well i really really hope that that was uh, informative and helpful and that you can use that in your next session i'd uh, love to hear about how it goes um so if you take it out for a session you think it works well or something doesn't work quite the way you expected um please leave those in the comments below and i'd be really keen to have a bit of a look again the link for the uh glide surf collective product is down in the description below so if you want to check any of that out head over to the website check out some of the product um i really appreciate everyone's support on that front um but other than that i think we'll leave it there for today and we'll catch you on the next video Yep.